The Great Barrier Reef. You know, this place. Hmm, maybe zoom in a little bit. Ah, there we go. The Great Barrier Reef is one of the world's seven natural wonders and is famous for a pretty good reason. Come on, sing with me. Oh! Not only is it absolutely stunning, it's the largest coral reef system on the planet. Sprawling over a jaw-dropping 344,400 square kilometres, which is nearly as big as Italy. It's home to thousands of coral species and animals and reels in about $5 billion in tourism each year. But if you've been to the reef recently, you might have noticed some parts are looking a little bit different. We've had a mass coral bleaching event declared on the Great Barrier Reef, which means the corals are starting to lose their colour. And if the waters of the reef don't cool down soon, we could see some of that coral starting to die, unfortunately. Coral bleaching happens when corals get too hot. They stress out and expel the tiny marine algae called zooxanthellae, which gives the coral their beautiful colours and makes them turn white. Scientists who've been surveying the reef recently say two thirds of it are experiencing coral bleaching right now. The waters along the whole of the Australian East Coast are really, really hot. And while that sounds fantastic for swimming, it's actually terrible for the health of the Great Barrier Reef. This isn't the first time it's happened. Widespread mass bleaching of the reef was first recorded in 1998. But it's happened a bunch of times since then. In fact, this is the fifth mass bleaching in the past eight years. And scientists suspect they know the cause. Uh, by climate change, um, by our emissions, without doubt. Yeah, while bleaching has always happened, they say global warming is driving up ocean surface temperatures, which is making it more common and more severe. I have in tears underwater every now and then when I see this stuff. Um, but I, I think it's really important to have hope. And there is hope. Coral bleaching doesn't mean the coral has died. And if temperatures go down, it can bounce back pretty quickly. The concern is if we keep having these repeated events, um, it doesn't give the reef enough time to recover. This and other threats like pollution and the crown of thorns starfish have led to the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organisation to recommend that the reef should be put on its list of World Heritage Sites that are in danger. And the government has been trying to stop that from happening by taking steps to improve water quality, reduce overfishing, control the crown of thorn starfish and look for ways to help the coral. We've put in $1.2 billion to protect our reef. We've doubled the funding for the Australian Institute of Marine Science to give our scientists the opportunity to do their good work in protecting the reef. And then there's so much you can do around your house and in your everyday life as well. Richard says things like recycling, reducing plastic use, saving power around the house and educating yourself and others all make a huge difference in protecting the Great Barrier Reef.